Hi, Dr. Gary Richter, and today we're going to talk about what sort of things to expect when you go to the veterinary hospital uh, for a visit. Uh, you know, I think it's a good idea to have some expectations going in so that way you can ask the appropriate questions when, uh, when they do come up. Uh, you know, most veterinary visits start with, um, start with getting some vital signs on your pet, their, their weight, their temperature, their heart rate, their respiratory rate. Uh, you know, occasionally we have somebody come in the hospital that for some reason doesn't want these things done with their pet. It is really important to allow the veterinarian or the veterinary technicians to get this data. Uh, this can provide a lot of insight into, into your, your pet's overall health. Um, you know, one of the most important things that a veterinarian can get from you during the veterinary visit is, is a good solid history uh, as far as how your dog or your cat or your other kind of pet is doing. Uh, remember, our pets are nonverbal, uh, so they're not going to tell us how they're feeling. And sometimes the subtle changes in how they're doing at home or their patterns of behavior can make a really big difference in, in, in cluing your veterinarian in to know, to know how healthy they are and how things are going. You know, after a thorough physical exam, which your veterinarian will do, um, he or she may make some recommendations as far as other tests that, that they may uh, feel are necessary to run, and that could be blood testing or x-rays or an ultrasound or any other, you know, any number of possible things. Um, and I know that sometimes these tests can, you know, can be a little bit, a little bit costly, uh, but you know, for the most part, if your veterinarian is recommending something like this, uh, most likely it's something that, that really would be a good idea to do. And if you have some questions about why these things are necessary, please don't hesitate to ask. Most veterinarians are more than happy to answer questions as long as they are asked in a respectful manner. Um, I would also highly encourage people to do some research. If your veterinarian tells you some things and, and, and makes some recommendations and you're not just quite ready to go there just yet, Go home and do some research, you know, talk to some people, look some things up on the internet. I mean, understand that everything on the internet is not necessarily, you know, written in stone as far as being, as far as being accurate, but you can certainly find some information there and maybe then go back and ask some other questions of your veterinarian. You know, I have always personally said that I will, I will be happy to talk to a client all day long as long as their questions are, are respectful. Um, so, uh, you know, it's very important to me as a, as a veterinarian that, that the, the animals that I'm taking care of and the, the people who are attached to them feel really good about what we're doing. So, um, so you, know, you know, feel free and ask questions. Uh, do your research. Um, but these are the kinds of things that are likely to come up in a veterinary visit. Uh, so, you know, being prepared for these kinds of issues is always a good way to go. So that's going to be it for today, uh, and tomorrow we're going to talk about, uh, you know, what appropriate follow-up looks like so, you know, you can take your veterinarian's recommendations and utilize those to the fullest and keep your pet as healthy and happy for as long as possible. So until then, have a great day.